market capitalization has reached 38.92 billion pesos. And for our objectives, we have uh, my group mate will explain. Okay, so for the objectives, we used three, three pound sign so that it will be our header three, as you can see. And our objective is to analyze and determine whether Yala and Dito are able to perform better than the over, overall performance of the PSEI. Okay, so moving on to data. So to run our code, these are the packages that we will need. So this one is just to set the global global environment to false or to set it as default so that in default all the codes won't print in the knitted document uh, HTML file. And to plot our data we use ggplot so we can just run all of these. Uh, we got our data from investigrams. Uh, we used data from Feb 17 until March 3. So this is our chart using uh, ggplot. So the colors, this is basically to set the manual legend as seen on the right side of the chart and this uh, ggplot is to reference the data set we used uh, imported from the excel file hmm. this is just to set date as the x-axis and to add multiple lines to our plot just add this code and put the plus sign on the end so that it will run properly as you keep adding lines. And you can set the, since we set the labels of the colors already, you can just reference these to their names. You can choose the line type and you can choose the size of the line. Here, or you can just set labels using this code on the ggplot chart. And okay, so for the analysis of our data. So based on our findings, uh, so the formula of beta is a covariance of the stock and the covariance of the market index over the co over the variance of the market index. So it's basically the slope of the chart uh, as seen here. It's the slope of the stock in the market index. So the cover the beta of Ayala Corporation is 1.3, indicating that is that it is a risky asset and the um, the beta of Dito is 0.44, indicating that it is a less volatile and less risky asset. But based on our findings, the average returns based on the 10 day movements of Ayala Corporation and Dito is um, Ayala had a mean movement of negative 0.11% while Dito, the stock with the lo lowest beta had a mean movement of negative 1.25%, which means Dito was down the most despite having the lowest beta. And the PSEI had a mean movement of 0.14, which is higher than the mean movement of AC despite it being having a beta of one or being the basis of these stocks. So what this basically so it Based on our data, it can be said that uh, it's misleading because the data we used was only based on 10 days and it was based on daily intervals. But according to a study done by Momsilovich, Begovich, and Tomasevich, uh, Pearson correlation coefficients indicate that strong positive correlation exists between betas based on daily, weekly, and monthly rates of return. And this means that 
even if we calculated our betas based on weekly data spanning um, 52 weeks or a year, or if we based it on monthly data spanning 12 weeks or a year, or even annual rates of return, the beta would still be approximately the same. So our conclusion is that um, beta isn't uh, at face value isn't really a good indicator of risk as seen in the findings. And if it was, if it was really needed to be used as a indicator of risk, then it shouldn't be taken at face value. So despite having, despite the stocks AC and Dito having more down days in the market, AC still posted um, being still as being down to, down the least out of the three assets in the study. Um, that is all. Okay, okay. Present the new output. No, no. Uh, yung next groups, guys. While you're showing the R markdown, sabi nyo ano yung output para kita natin parang one to one correspondence. So there, there's your GG plot, guys. Although lesson, lesson pa natin next week yun. I'm happy that the group uh, made use of GG plot. Okay. It's a uh, Coming from the package, kikita nyo, no? may yung structure ni ggplot. It's layering of uh, of figures, layering of objects in your data. Kaya nag nagpa-plus tayo. So nagsimula sila sa yung ggplot, beta nila, yung beta. And then aesthetics is supposed to map yung kung ano yung x, at saka y-axis. So they're saying here that the x is your, your date. And then, uh, dito yung Y nila, dun sa mga next, geom line, is supposed to be another layer. Ang geom line will uh, create a line. Tapos yung Y ng isa, si PSEI. Tapos yung isa naman, si AC. Tapos yung isa, si dito. And then yung label, uh, price change. Tapos continuous yung label nila. Okay, accuracy of 2. So that's two decimal places, <clears throat> continuous, kasi percent siya, no? Okay, so that, that in a nutshell is that, yeah, is that uh, chunk code that plots <coughs> this data. Uh, next time, guys, pakilagay yung pangalan nyo, ha? Para, ano, task, take ownership of your output. Pakiangat nga, guys, yung sa R markdown. Uh, ang kulang nyo dito, guys, wala kayong formulas. No? May ginamit ba kayong formulas? Oh, yes, sir. But ano, ano formula we, yung ginamit? Would we put it as a image? At, would we we put it as an image? Uh, so, this I mean, one, sir. Saan? Uh, the formula for beta, which is covariance over variance. Or no, yung just, formula mismo, yung, yung print out ng formula. Just like what the other groups did. Kunyari, oh, no. My no, sir, I think no? uh, my, yeah, my group used an image lang to show mm. the formula, mm. which so, is here. Dito. Yes, sir. Uh, wait, ano to? Saan yung code na to limitation? Saan yan? Oh, it's, it's here, sir, in the findings and conclusion. Did you use an R code here? Maka chunk ba? Image yan? Uh, the formula is an image. Mm, sana, in right. na lang, ginawa nyo lang sana. Yes, sir. Ginawa nyo lang code chunk mismo. Okay, guys, so, uh, I don't know in what other, maybe in INVE or in, in your other uh, finance subjects, uh, you're going to meet that formula, the beta. It's just uh, simply the ratio of your covariance of your as asset in your market divided by the variance of the market. It's simply your, the slope actually, when you plot your asset and your market. Okay, so, all right, thank you so much, group number number one. Okay, so let's have group number, paki, uh, paki, thank you na lang sa group number one, guys. Let's give a big hand to group number one. Paki, cut na lang, guys. Uh,
Okay, next is group number four. Sir, four or seven po. Ano ba yung susunod na sinabi ko? Seven? Seven po. Seven, sige, seven. Okay, sir. Sir, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, good morning, sir. So for today, we would be discussing a case analysis on Apple's stock price. We are group seven, which consists of Orgamosa, Bongolan, Del Rosario, and Sue. So for our main heading, which is a re retrospective analysis on Apple's stock price, notice that the AAPL is italicized using this code. Then it is also represented by a single number sign to emphasize that it's the main heading. Then moving on for our image, this is the formula we used that we got in the R Markdown cheat sheet. Then we decided to place it at the center because if there's no center code, it would be on the left side. Then we also changed, it, changed the size to 324 because the original image is too big. Then next, we would be using this. For our first code chunk, we would be using library Excel since we, our date imported data is an Excel file, then ggplot2 since we would be graphing later on, and lastly, TTR which is technical trading rule since we would be using the moving average as we go further along. I would now give the floor to my groupmate Jason as he will be discussing Apple's company background. Hello? Hello, sir. And for our Hello? Yeah. Sir, can you hear me? Ngayon, meron. Ah, okay. Sir, na-disconnect daw po si Jason. So, I'll read it. I'll, ano na lang. Sige. Hello? Hello? Ay, Ayan, ano, okay. Okay. Sorry, na-disip. Okay, Jason, continue. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, sorry na-disconnect po ako kanina. Okay lang. Oh, sige. Please continue. Sir, and for our um, up and for our company's background is first is for our Apple company is the first the heading we will first set Apple company and that will be the f heading sir with double double number sign that will be the first heading and and next is will be our up will be our subheading is Apple was founded in April 1976 by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak who brought a new perspective by changing the new by changing the way people look on computers. Apple went public on December 12, 1980, with an initial offering at $22.8 per share. Through the rest of the 1980s, Apple is still doing well, and during 1990, Apple reached its highest peak profit. However, Apple was believed to be doomed not until they asked some help from Steve Jobs and became the CEO of Apple that has made some new changes and this became the turning point of Apple. That led Apple had some changes and this became, Apple had a profound impact on technology with Steve Jobs introducing the iBooks, iPad, iTunes, and iPhone Terrell. And under under this will be the source and the link, sir. Oh, uh, sir, to add, we use the uh, the or markdown cheat sheet to use this code so that it will be also presented in the final HTML file. So next, moving on is the stock report of Apple from January three two thousand six to January twenty two thousand six. Sir, kita po ba yung table or yes. bit it? Okay. So for this chunk code. 
we decided to use echo false because we we don't want the main text or the main code to be shown in the final HTML output. Rather, we want the table to be shown. So with that, our first object, which is data one, we chose read.csv since we would be using an Excel file. And the Excel file name is aapl.csv. Then we also chose to make the header true so that this would appear. Then we also use the net R or cable since we would be generating a simple table as seen in our final HTML output. Then it's what uh, 1 to 14 since we have 14 different dates that we would be plotting later on. And its caption would be historical stock prices of Apple from January 3, 2006 to January 20, 2006, which is this one. And to add, we also included its link using the same formula we used in the company background. Here, sir. The next is okay. Then moving on to this code chunk, we chose to include equals false because we want it to run, but we don't want it to be included in our final HTML output. Output. The next is the stock performance of Apple from January 3, 2006 to January 20, 2006. That was analyzed using first the mean, next standard deviation, and third the moving average. We place it in the center using this code. Job, this code, sorry. So first is the mean formula, dollar sign and this, and then this uh, code that we got online. When run, this would be the final output. Then same goes for the standard deviation. We also use the same uh, format, but a different formula perspective since we would be using standard deviation. So next is the computation of the mean of the closing stock prices of the 14 dates. So with that, we use this code chunk first. R echo equals false. As stated earlier, we want this, we, we don't want this code to be shown and we just want the result. So with that, we use the formula round mean AAPLXL dollar sign close three. This means that we want to use the closing uh, column in the Excel file and rounding it off to three decimal places. Then the same goes to the mean of the opening stock prices as seen in this one. Then moving on is the standard deviation of the closing stock prices. Technically, we use the same formula for the mean of the closing price, but then we change the, uh, co the column to the closing. It would be presented later on in our appendix. Then the standard deviation is a measure of how dispersed the data is in relation to the mean. The closing stock prices are more closer to the mean than the opening stock prices. Hence, we could deduce that the open stock price have more disparate values than the closing stock price per period of price for the period indicated. So moving on, this is the plot of the 14-day closing price of Apple. We will be starting from this point onwards. So R equals echo false. Then for the days, which is our x-axis, we chose the numeric vector 1 to 13, since we have 13 data set, uh, 13 days, so it's your type of 14. And then for the closing, it is represented by y axis. Then for it to plot, we use this code plot days, uh, comma, closing price. The x is represented by days, and y is represented by closing price. Um, I would now give the floor to my group mate for it to present the analysis. For the interpretation of the plots, um, we used four number signs, similar to the app to the company background of Apple. So it's not as big as the header. So as seen in the plot, the highest closing price of Apple took place on the ninth date, while the lowest closing price took place on the third date. The first, fourth, sixth, seventh, and ninth dates are positive had the positive growth closing with a higher stock price than its opening stock price, while the rest decreased. And for the opening price, as seen in the plot, the highest opening price of Apple took place on the 10th date, 
while the lowest price took place on the first date. There is also a significant increase of value on the seventh date, which indicates that Apple stock stocks became in demand and more valuable. However, after its peak on the 10th date, the opening prices continued to decrease. So as seen there, we also used four number signs. So it will have the same, I'm sorry. So it will have the same. Sorry, sorry. So it will have the same size as the first one. Thank you. Uh, to add to that, the data that we plotted here also came from the Excel file that we imported kanina, sir. Now, we move on to the moving average that will be presented by Hazel. Okay, for the moving average, we first place two number signs. You have a bigger text, and then we define moving average as the calculation of prices that is derived from the full set of data in a certain period. It can always also be used to identify trend directions in the stock market among any other applications. And we used four number signs for this text to have a smaller font size. As for the uh, simple moving average computation, we assigned AAPL XL dollar sign MA5 and calculated the answer using the PTR two columns SMA function where SMA stands for simple moving average and it's from the TTR package and within the parentheses we included the column in the Excel file and the days I'll have to compute which is in our case it's 5 and 10. So yeah, um, you don't have to actually assign it. We just did because we'd like to make a new columns for the moving averages. So when we run the view a APL XL or the data file, it would show up. And for us to also use FOTube at the end. And with that, we were able to get the answers for moving averages. As for the graph, we plotted close prices as a line graph using the jump line option in ggplot. We first assigned it to MA, but again, even without doing so, it'll still run. We just assigned it because we wanted to have a simple word for the graph itself. So for that, we assigned MA first and used ggplot in plotting the data. And we used the coding function AES to map out the data, which is the date for the x-axis and the closing price and the, the five-day moving averages for MA5 and the 10-day moving averages for the MA10. So the y's in the three jump lines is to input the y values that we need, which is our computations and the closing price. Color is to indicate the text that would appear in the legend, while the group equals to one, from what I understood is to prevent the default behavior and, behavior, and that there's a no cut in the data. In our case, because we have NA, so we need to group it to tell R that the NA should be in proportion to the metadata. So with that, um, yung team naman, we wanted it to be minimal for a white yung background with lines. But we could also change it to dark, light, classic, or any other option pa. And we use team to place the position of the legend on top because if default, it'll be placed on the right side, but then it's quite compressed now, so we decided to place it on top. For the labs, we used it to also input the title and changing name for the legend, which is the default is in color, so we changed it to prices. And we included the chunk in warning equals false to prevent the warning signs and needed file. And with that, we were able to generate the graph. So next. Like I said, Ganina, we copy pasted the code um, and placed eval equals false to, this, to just display the R code without evaluating it so it wouldn't make another graph. And for the last two code chunks, we displayed the values for the five and 10 day moving averages of closing stock prices by using the objects we assigned to it, yung AAPL XL dollar sign MA5 and AAPL XL dollar sign MA10 to it and place eval equals true just to show the raw data. And then we also just wanted to show the image wherein we computed the moving averages using Excel and it generated the same values as the TTR SMA function. So yeah, we just did that to also double check. As for the conclusion, we just stated that the mean and 
standard deviation implies that the data is ranging relatively close to each other and is not far off from the mean and is clustered around it. We concluded, concluded that the Apple stock have no clear trend during this time. The moving averages of the closing price can help filter out noise or volatility since it is only taking into consideration the stock's closing price for the day. We placed three number signs for the conclusion and four number signs for the actual text. Um, with the references, naman, we included all the resources the sources we used, and we also added the straight lines to make it an APA format. And with that, we were able to finish this report. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, very good report, comprehensive. So this is all about moving averages, no, of stock. Uh, just some few comments. Uh, sana in-update nyo na yung data. Bakit? Uh, parang nga pala 2006 ang ginamit nyo. Sir, yun po yung nahihirapan po kami humanap ng data for Apple. <laughs> and ano po sir, yung data po na nakita namin, like yung recent, uh, masyado pong dispersed, like volatile. So, eh, eh, ano naman kung volatile? Sir, mas can, you, can you see the screen? The screen ko, guys? Ay, wait lang. Sir, should I stop screen sharing? Sige, sige. Okay, uh, then, wag muna, wag muna. Sige, may mga comments pa ako dyan. And then, I'll, let me address your question. Hindi na yata kayo nakapost. Uh, sir, share screen ulit ako. Sige, sige. What's good about this report, guys, is they made use of yung uh, TTR, uh, TTR package, yung trading... Uh, ano yung, ano? Ano yung P-Don? Trading, technical trading ba? Uh, yes, sir. A technical trading in R, guys, is a very powerful package, especially for technical analysis. So, uh, gumamit sila ng GG Plato, which is very good. Uh, although medyo may, pwede naman yung ginawa nila, kaso pakiflash nga yung, ano, yung, yung code chunk nyo dun sa GG Plato, yung MA nyo. Oh, uh, wait lang, sir. Ayan, sige. Uh, this is quite a strange way of... Pero okay naman, gumagana naman siya, no? Kasi, anong nangyari dito? So, yung first MA nyo, guys, can you see the, ano? Ah, sige, dito na lang sa sa output natin, tingnan. Paki-flash nga yung sa output. Paki uh, sir, can you see my screen? Uh, go up pa, oh, Go up sa output. Yung sa MA, yan, yan, sige, yan. So this is the uh, code for the the plot, this plot above here. Uh, uh, well, since we're going to learn already ggplot2 by next week, hopefully, uh, late, at the late, latest start na natin ng ggplot2 yan, no? Make sure that you have uh, upload, uh, downloaded yung ggplot2 package, no? So dito nag-create sila ng object na MA, okay, ggplot. And then the data is AAPLX. Actually, the complete code is data is equal to. And then they're saying that the x-axis should be date. And then they created another object, MA ulit, which is just MA, yung dating MA plus. Then they, they added a layer here, geom line. Okay, so they're now creating a line, line plot, where the y-axis is equal to the closing price and the color is equal to separate na color for close. And then, ano para sa yung group number equal to one, guys? Group seven? What is this for? Okay, from what I understood po, it's to prevent the point default behavior and there's no cut to data. Kasi sa case po namin meron pong NA, so parang hindi po siya nare-recognize if without yung group. Ah, okay, sige, sige. Anyway, we'll discuss the details of this later, no? Now, nag-create ulit sila ng another object, MA ulit, and then it is, uh, they're passing on the previous MA, yung second MA, kaya may, may MA na dito sa pangatlo, no? Plus, Okay. Now, this can, could have been done also just simply by adding plus sa dulo and then geom line. Tanggalin na itong mga ano kasi ang daming layering, ang daming MAs na ano ito. No? Uh, this could have been done just simply by doing it. Uh, kunyari, yung so second MA, second line. Plus na lang sa dulo, tapos geom line na kagad yung susunod. Oh. A's, A's is equal to Y, MAS. Okay. And then plus na naman. So you just, ang, ang kagad na kasi sa GG plot po guys, you just keep on adding layers upon layers upon layers. Oh, so no need to 
have this very, very, uh, let's say, medyo, it's a circuitous way of doing it. Pero nag-work naman siya. Kaso nga lang, uh, in terms of coding, hindi siya maganda. No? Pero okay naman, for our purposes, since hindi pa naman talaga tayo ggplot ang dinidiscuss, uh, this, uh, this round well, kasi nga, nag-create sila ng panibagong MA, panibagong MA, panibagong MA, panibagong MA. And they kept on layering upon that newly created MA. Okay, maano nga lang siya, ma medyo code siya, code maraming madagdag na code. Okay, so tapos, ano pa ba yung comment ko dito? Okay, yung references nyo ba? Lahat yun, ilan nyo? Lahat na mention nyo dun sa paper? Yan. Make sure yes. that dapat naka-ano to, naka-mention dun sa ano sa uh, guys, so okay, maglalagay ng reference na hindi niyo naman ginamit dun sa ano dun yes, sa, sa paper, no? Ginamit po lahat siya. Okay, good. Now, I just like to uh, siguro magkaroon tayo isang session na ano na si quant mode, guys, kasi si quant mode, yung mga sinasabi niyo mahirap na kunin ng stock prices, ang dali niyan sa package na quant mode. And besides, guys, flash ko lang. Sige, can I, may I flash now the screen? Okay, sir. I'll stop screen share. Sige. Oh. Uh, yung sinasabi niyo, mahirap po na yung price. Actually, sa Yahoo Finance. Bili lang yun. So, i-google nyo lang Yahoo Finance. Uh, I'm sure some of my students before know, know about this. Can you see the screen, guys? Hindi po, yes. sir. Ay, hindi pa ba? Okay, sandali. Yes. Sorry. Share screen. Okay, ginugel ko lang guys yung Yahoo Finance. No? So this is Yahoo Finance. Tapos, dapat alam niyo yung ticker symbol ng company. Kunyari AAPL. And so that's Apple. No? Click na lang yan. Ito guys. So. This is Apple. And then you, you can get the historical data here. You can download the historical data. Yeah. You can identify the date. Kung kailan yung start, kailan yung end. Okay. I won't, I won't anymore. Uh, you can make it daily. You can make it weekly. You can make it monthly. Okay. And in fact, you can create a uh, comparative chart out of that. Okay. This is the uh, this is the uh, behavior, the performance of Apple stock ng simulat. Yan. Tapos uh, all time high nila bandang 2000. Okay. And then you can make a comparison out of it. Pwedeng uh, sanin si comparison. Yan ang comparison. Tagalin natin si Apple. You can click comparison here and then say si Standard and Poor's, kunyari. Uh, whose ticker symbol is GSPC. Ayan. So ito yung blue na to, si Standard and Poor's. That's the market while Apple really beats the market no? between stock prices in Apple. Okay, so you can get it from, from Yahoo Finance. Uh, as finance students, guys, dapat alam natin yung mga resources na yan, no? And siguro we'll have a special session on, on uh, quant mode, which is what I'm using in an elective now, so finance, which is in mode in order to do technical uh, analysis, fundamental analysis of stock prices and their returns. Okay. So, thank you so much, group number seven. Okay, let's now have it, uh, group number four. You may present now, please. Uh, 
couple din. Um, good morning, everyone. We are Group 4, and our chosen topic is about a short analysis of Apple Inc.'s stock prices during the pandemic. So for the introduction, I used images to support the brief background of Apple. To embed external images in the RMB file, I used the include underscore graphics. I, said, I stated echo equals false in order for the code to not be seen in the document. Then, I included the figure caption of each picture and the APA in-text citation. Then, the output width is 30% since I don't want it to fully occupy the document, but you can input any number that you like. Then, all the pictures are aligned at the center of the page. For the first paragraph, I briefly describe what the Apple company is, its founders, the variety of products it offers, and how it revolutionized the world due to its creation of personal computing devices with a graphical user interface. Then, I mentioned the first Apple computer and how, and how it resulted to millions of sold units until today. I also included the global revenue of Apple for 2004 to 2020 in billion US dollars and how it increased due to the successful contribution of some of its products. Lastly, I mentioned its groundbreaking record of hitting $1 trillion on 2018 and $2 trillion on 2020, which makes it the first publicly traded US company to reach these numbers. Then, as you can see, the one trillion market value of Apple is in blue, which means that if you click it, there's a link that leads you to more information about it. The same goes for the second one, which is Apple's two trillion dollars. Next is Sedge. For the Apple stock price data, we have gathered CSV or comma separated values files from Kaggle, which included the daily, weekly, and monthly prices of the company's stocks. In order for R to read a CSV file, we can use the code read.csv with the file path to import the data. The group decided to use the monthly price data for the output. That is why we use the code evalfalls for the daily and weekly price data in order to not run their code and so that its results will not be included in the output. We also use the code chunk instruction echo false so that these codes will not be visible when the whole file gets needed. If you could notice the stock price of Apple doubled from the time when the pandemic was about to start. This was possible because as the pandemic started, Apple managed to provide new products and features such as the M1 chip and the iPhone 12 and iPad lineup to its customers, in which they gladly consumed to get through online classes and work from home setup. The group has also put hyperlinks, which would direct to the websites where we can read more about such information. Next. Uh, so the group uh, uh, used the chunk, the net R ops chunk set, and an echo two to show the um, the prices and the stocks. Um, here na nakalagay po yung opening price, closing closing prices and date. Um, we chose opening and closing price because we're gonna compare the difference between the two variables. And then next, under the table, uh, just the description about the, the table. And then next up is the plot. We used uh, vectors for the opening price and closing price. Uh, so it will be uh, listed uh, in the plot. And they round up lang po yung um, nakalista na prices into two decimal numbers. So we use scattered plot because we're going to describe the relationship between the two variables. And then under that is the description for the scattered plot. Hey, my question ako, ha? So is it really needed to <clears throat> still create this object, the opening price, the closing price? Sorry, sorry. Uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, is, is there still a need to create an object? called opening price and closing price, if you're going to plot 
uh, plot uh, the these uh, prices opening and closing. Group four. Is that really necessary? Okay, but you have an object already. Saan na galing na object yan? Yung prices na yan? Uh, from the Excel po, sir. Oo, pero di ba nag-create na kayo ng object? Can you, can you show your environment, global environment? Ayan, di ba? Sa yung Apple, ano ba? Apple, uh, is that Apple Weekly? O monthly pala? Apple M, di ba? So, what, what could be a better alternative, guys? Uh, instead of, uh, once again, creating this object, opening price, at saka closing price, just to, uh, just to plot. Uh, can you view yung Apple week, uh, monthly nyo? Yan yung Apple monthly, di ba? Yan, di ba? So what's an alternative, group number four? To plot yung opening at saka closing price. Without creating an object called opening price and closing price. Kasi dun sa code nyo, nag-create kayo ng panibagong object, di ba? Anyone, guys, from the class? Instead of creating an object called opening price and then closing price and then plotting it uh, sa baba again, go, go down, dun sa pag-plot natin. Okay. Uh, class, can you see this? So what they did was to create an object called opening price and then uh, they, they came up with a vector of the opening price, also of the closing price. Tapos plinat nila si opening price at saka si closing price. No? Opening price is your X and closing price is your Y. Another alternative could have been anyone from the class? Uh, this came from yung Apple M. Apple M data natin. Pwede, pwede din naman na without creating this, no? Plot, then pwede Apple M dollar sign opening price and then comma Apple M dollar closing price. Pwede rin yun, no? Kasi it, it came from one object, um, Apple M. No? So we don't have to, no need to create yung opening and closing price. If your objective is just to, is just to uh, plot. At saka, ito, yung prices na to, di ba? Meron na naman table sa taas, di ba? Yung opening and closing. So this could have been redundant. Uh, group 4, can you, do you understand? In comment, no? no? Yes, sir. So, hindi na kailangan sana itong opening at saka closing ito. O, sige, please continue. Hello. Can you yes. Okay. Please continue. Okay. As for the okay, as for the computations, we chose to do mean, median, and standard deviation because we are just showing a recent analysis of Apple stock prices. Overall, so we computed everything manually so that the readers can see what happened. For the mean, we of course used a double dollar sign to enclose the equation. Then we just searched different codes of each part of the equation and connected it together. Lastly, after computing everything, we found out that the mean is 86.33. Please scroll down. Okay, for the median, we have to arrange the data first. And since the total number is odd, which is 13, it was easy to pinpoint which one is the median. And the answer is 77.38. Finally, for the standard deviation, just like the mean, we just compiled the different parts of the equation in order to show, the, just to show the formula of the SD. And since it's long, we opted to compute it in steps so it wasn't confusing. Finally, we got the answer of 22.77. Um, this then 
implies that Apple saw regular increase in their stock prices during the pandemic. This could be attributed to the fact that people had to resort to online classes and work from home setup since they were all forced to stay inside the comfort of their homes in order to lessen the risk of catching COVID-19. As for the computation itself, of course, we could do this automatically since our already asset feature, which was, which was mentioned by the uh, earlier groups who presented, but we double-check the solution and the answer is the same the as well. And lastly, this is our reference in ADA format. And to indent the second line, we simply just use a vertical, li vertical line at the beginning. That's all I think as well. Okay, thank you, group number, number four. Did you use all these references in your text? Yes, sir. Po. Nasa okay. paragraphs po. Oh, dapat nasa paragraphs yan, ha? Just to remind everyone, when you put references, guys, kailangan yan. Just like that. Kailangan nasa yan. Tama. Okay. That's good. Okay. Th th thank you so much, group number uh, group number four. Okay. Let's give a big hand to group number four. All right. Then we have group number eight. Last na, no? Okay, so hello sir, we're group 8 and today we're going to talk about the Intel stock analysis. We will going to discuss Intel's company background, board of directors, competitors, price data description, price data visualization, and technical analysis. So the code for the company background of Intel Corporation is written here sa our studio. There's really no code actually, you will just have to type the explanation or the text itself then dalabas na siya sa output. On the other hand, for Intel's logo naman, the code is include underscore graphics, open parenthesis, the location of the photo, and then close parenthesis. You just have to take note lang na we have to change the backward slash to forward slash once kinopin natin yung link or yung path ng photo since usually backward slash siya. And if backward slash siya, then magaka error, then we won't be able to knit it to HTML. Then, nilagay, lastly, nilagay namin yung echo equals false so that hindi lumabas yung code sa output. And the output is 25%, which is the size of the logo. And for the board of directors naman, same process with Intel's logo lang, sir. So for the table, it contains the competitors of Intel Corporation and the products they offer to the market. Its competitors include Advanced Micro Devices or AMD, which offers motherboards, servers, and other computer-related hardware. Next is IBM or International Business Machines, which offers ATM, hard disk, floppy disk, and magnetic stripe. Another competitor is NVIDIA, which offers video games and chips for mobile phones and automobiles. Lastly, Samsung, which offers semiconductors for smartphones and data centers. So what we did here was we first installed DevTools, which provides our functions that simplify common tasks, including tables. So through the add-ins feature, we clicked the insert table. Then we just copied the text in Excel and pasted it to the blank table. Then this is the output. Uh, hello. Okay, so for line 49, the code chunk at, at line 49, at that point, we were 
we were installing the the packages. So we use QuantMod, ggplot, DevTools, Cable, etc. And deep deep play or deep layer. Anyway, so anyway, uh, hindi yan kita sa aming output sa let's say sa front end hindi yan kita sa HTML. Pero ang kita dyan is yung next joke lang. Yung 61 deploy, yung code joke na 61 hindi siya kita sa PDF kasi ang function ng 61 is to basically get data. So, ang ginawa niyan, uh, so meaning yan, INTC, so gumawa kami ng object, INTC, yan yung, yan yung ticker symbol ng Intel. So, ginawa namin, INTC, get symbols, INTC, source is Yahoo. So, basically, ang gagawin yan, from online source ng Yahoo, kukunin namin yung stock data from March from March 7, 2016 to March 7, 2021. So, five-year data siya from 2016 to 2021 ng Intel. So, we use, ang gamit dyan is quant mode. So, you need quant mode para magamit mo yung get symbols sa function. Okay, so, dahil lang okay. na. So, once... Ah, okay. Moment lang, comment lang. Guys, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, no? yung quant mode na package. So, you can easily get stock prices. The code is just get symbols and then yeah, in yung yung ticker symbol niya, source is Yahoo, and then you can specify from what date to what date. Huh? Okay, so very, very convenient, very uh, simple to use, and very powerful. So uh, quant mode has lots and lots and lots of functionalities that can be done for investment analysis. So this is more more a uh, really finance finance tool. And I hope you'll, you'll uh, look at this and learn from it. And dami na naman tutorials yan. So, uh, for your own benefit, guys, uh, aralin nyo itong quant mode. Okay? So, itong deploy R at saka ggplot2, I'm happy that you, you are already uh, doing some advanced uh, discussions here because after ggplot2, we're going to learn yung data manipulation uh, package, which is deploy R. So, please continue. Okay, sir. Then, after getting the data, so we have the object INTC na. So, ginawa namin is para ma-describe yung data, we use yung head, tail, summary, pati yung STR, yung structure niya. So, for the head, makuha mo yung, at default, six, yung first six na items makuha mo dyan. Then yung tail, ayan din. So, may kita natin sa 2016, madali natin makita na ang adjusting price niya, ang adjusted price niya sa 27, pero yung tail niya, mga dulong prices niya, goes from 58 to 60. So, tumas siya from 2016 to 2021. So, ayun yun. yun yung, kaya namin yung head and tail. Then, for the summary, yung summary naman, useful siya sa amin kasi malalaman mo yung niya, yung mga quartile median for each column. So, yung index. Yan. So, basically, yun lang yung time. Tapos, merong opening price. Makita mo yung mid, median, saka yung other measures for statistics. Meron din high, low, close, volume, and adjusted. Tapos, for the next one, meron tayong price data visualization. So, dyan na namin ginamit yung ggplot2. So, from there, may kita natin yung data niya from 2016 to 2021. So, as you can see, para mas precise yung ano niya. Mas precise yung yung linya niya kasi marami yung data dyan. And daily yan. Daily pala. Daily five-year adjusted stock price. We use the adjusted stock price. Then, so, that's it. So, let's go burn. Yeah. Sandali lang sa plot. Okay. Go, go up again. Uh, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo guys, ano? layer upon layer. So we have ggplot, Intel, ang x-axis niya yung index, index ng Intel, at saka yung y-axis niya will be Intel. And then this is bracket, ibig sabihin yung sixth column, no? Ayan, no? which is the uh, adjusted close. No? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yung sixth column which is the adjusted close. So, ang pinapaplot na dito yung, yung date with the adjusted close. Then, back to the code, please. Okay. So, and then, nag-add siya ng layer, di ba? Plus, okay, yung geom line, color is equal to blue. Then, another plus, uh, GG, ano yung title? Binigay niya yung title. And then, another plus. Okay, just take note, guys, na pag nag-end ka ng ng function ng code sa ggplot uh, the plus should be at the end. No? Hindi pa pwede magkaroon ng plus sa beginning. Mag-error mag yun kapag yung plus natin nasa ano. The plus should always be at the end. So this is x label 
plus Y label, plus kung ano yung theme nila, na, tapos may adjustment dito sa horizontal. Okay, plus kung ano yung scale ng data label sila. Ano yung percent B percent Y group? What's this? Yung label sa to. What's this? Percent B percent sir. Y? Not sure, sir. Nakuha lang namin sa online. Okay. okay. Kaya nga, yeah. pag ganyan, guys, aaralin nyo, ha? Kasi pwede okay. kasi ano yan. Percent B is the month, okay? Month in small letters. No? Ayan, tinan nyo. Uh, in, ano, in, ano lang siya yung hindi buong month. Kaya tinan nyo, des, des lang, June, uh, yung first three letters lang. And then percent Y, ano yung percent Y, guys? Yung two letters din. Kung ginawa nila itong percent capital B, percent capital Y, spell out yung January and then 2017 ilalagay no kung percent y na big letter. Okay, then breaks nila every 6 months yung ano yung yung pinaplot. Okay? Sige, subukan mo yan. Siguro init mo na lang yung yung buo. Anyway guys, yung percent B, that's to, <clears throat> may kulang pa dyan yung D, you know? hindi linagay yung D. Okay, ibig sabihin, walang ano, walang ano to, walang, only the month and the year yung linagay nila. Okay, sige, please continue in technical analysis. Sige po sir, let me continue. Okay. So, for this part sir of the chunk, Basically, ito na yung five-year volume niya, sir. So, instead of column six, nilagay ko lang po is column five. So, before, sir, akala ko na parang kukuha na lang tayo ng, ng data like yung sa mean nga, sir, para kumuha lang tayo ng data from INTC na parang data tapos ano to? dollar sign tapos volume. Akala ko ganun, pero apparently, ganito lang pala, sir, ka-simple. Tapos... Same lang, sir. Volume, I mean, colors, blue, GG title, XLab, YLab. Tapos, ganun, sir. That's basically for volume in five years. Ngayon, sir, dito na naman, sir, sa next part. This, dito, sir, we used moving averages, sir. So, dito muna, sir, we started with setting or assigning variables muna, sir para makuha yung information. And then, dito, itong variables na ito, sir, is to get the moving averages na mismo, sir. So, we don't we, did, we don't need to do any formulas na, sir. Pero dito sa package na po ito, sir, meron na siyang function to automatically calculate MA, sir. Kaya ngayon, nilagay namin sa ggplot yung mga variables na ito na automatically solved for the moving averages in 10 days and 30 days. So, dito lang sir, isang limita may dalawang limitations lang dito sir sa code na ito. Una, it doesn't account for gap, for gap sir sa stock prices. Address the class please. Sorry po sir. Uh, address the class, huwag lang ako. Ah, okay, so hello, hello everyone. So, ang isa sa mga... Isa sa mga limitations nito is that hindi ma-account for yung mga gaps. Kasi if you're going to look at Intel stock prices, kung kuwari, I'll, I'll put it here in the screen. May mga gaps sa prices. May mga gaps sa prices dito. So if we if we go back to to our studio, since GG, or since jump line lang siya, didiretso lang siya doon sa point na yun. Hindi siya magsiskip or anything like that. And then, second limitation is, hin is yung size ng chart. So, if we full screen natin ito, parang hindi, hindi siya ma-stretch sa buong screen. Parang it's just one portion of the screen lang. So, since yun ang isa sa mga limitations, ginawa ko na lang is nilakyan ko na lang yung size <laughs> ng lines which, which is reflected over here. Dito sa size. Size 1 for the 10 for color red and size 2 for 
call for MA30. Uh, size green, yeah. Yeah, size 2. So, yan basically for MA. Tapos, si this is for MA for the 5 years, 2016 to, 20 to 2021. And ngayon, dito, then in the next one, it's the same thing, pero ginawa lang namin is in one year. One year lang siya. Nakalimit siya to one year. So, paano yung ginawa? Is dito sa unang variable pa lang mismo, naglagay na kami ng limit ng limitation greater than equal to 2021 ay 20, 2020 January 1 so if i ano mo dito i, i compare mo dito sa unang graph namin dito sa line 101 2016 ang start ngayon dito 2020 ang start so ganun ganun lang subset the index galing sa INTC and then date and it's basically the same thing over here Tapos, sir, to comply with your with your requirements for a Greek symbol, we also included mean of mean prices. So mean of price over five years. So ito yun, sir. In sa internet, parang may nakita kong lista ng mga codes ng ng mu, beta, gamma, all like that. May parang may column siya for all of those. Kaya napi ko na lang and from ano from last week's presentation din nag naglagay na lang din ako ng adjustment sir para maganda siya tingnan kaya ayun ito na yan sir this is for getting the mean nagread lang kami ng from the from the database dito sa INTC sa CSV file namin and then yun, assign lang ng value sir and, there we have it. That's it, sir, for our presentation. Po. If you have any questions, po, we will gladly answer it. Po. Okay, thank you so much, group number eight. Let's give them a big, big hand. Okay, thank you. Very good, very good. Uh, very major advanced saying ggplot nito, no? So, uh, we will be learning ggplot2 by next week. Of course, it will not be as uh, really as complicated uh, as uh, what's presented here. But on your own, guys, you can expand your knowledge of ggplot2. Because in itself, ggplot2, all the uh, all the functionalities of it, it will need one term. So, ang importante sa atin, guys, magkaroon lang kayo ng working knowledge on what ggplot2 is all about and the layering that you can do with it. And then on your own, you can already expand your your knowledge. Ito nga, hindi pa natin nadi-discuss, you know, the group was able to already present this. Okay, hindi naman siya ganun kahirap, guys. Ako, I tend not to memorize codes, guys. Kung kailangan ko lang, ay meron ako naka-ready na ng mga codes or kung may kailangan akong feature, I just research on it. I, I do not tend to memorize codes. Unless yung mga basic talaga, yung mga fundamental na codes, that sigurado memorize ko. Pero yung mga specialized na or if you need special features or special uh, special uh, plots, then I normally would tend to research on that. No? Hindi ko siya minememorize kasi ang dami i-memorize kung ganyan gagawin niya. Mahirap. Mahirap siya i-memorize. Alright, so thank you so much group number A. Thank you. Okay, so that uh, completes guys our discussion of uh, the, the presentation. And we have uh, only a few more minutes left, but I'd like to at least be able to start. Okay, kindly open your R, guys. The the uh, the file we were working on last time in data structures. And am I right, guys, that we have uh, finished uh, vectors? And we have learned up to subsetting, di ba natapos natin yun? We were able to complete itong kunyari, example natin, uh, days. We're creating here a character vector and then we learned how to subset. Tama ba ako ba, guys? Natapos natin itong subsetting. Eh, wala po kami nakikita. Ay, sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay, so... This is the R file we were working on last time. And I think we were able to finish subsetting vectors, right? Where we learned how to get 
specific elements of a vector using the bracket sign. Okay, chat nga guys, if it's, uh, if I'm, yeah, I think we were able to do that, no? Okay, so the next data structure that we'd like to look into is uh, a list. We said that a vector only consists of one data type. If you try to create a vector that consists of several types, several data types, R will coerce. Uh, R will coerce it into uh, the higher data data format. No? So this is the, uh, this is the, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, the, uh, the, uh, the ranking, guys. So if you're creating a vector consisting of logical, integer, numeric, complex, and character, R will coerce it into a character vector. If there's no character vector and only up to complex, then R will coerce it into a complex data type. Okay. So the next data structure we're going to look at is a list. Uh, the list differs from a vector in that a list can contain several data types. So let's get this example. We have list one. Okay, so sorry, let, let me just remove the... Let me remove first, first all the... Uh, objects that I've created, okay, so that we are on equal footing. Let's run the days object, guys, right? so that we have the days here because we're going to use that uh, now. Okay, here we're going to create a list, list, and it consists of several data types, a numeric, a, an integer, a character, a logical, a complex, and another numeric. If we run this, then R will accept it, guys, because of this function called list. Unlike if this was, uh, if you just put this as, so let me do that. So here I'm creating a vector, guys, of uh, different data data types. Will this run? If I run this, okay, what happened? It did create, however, it converted everything as a, as a what, guys? As a character. No? So, kasi yung C, guys, uh, it will create a vector. So, can you urge ni R that everything should be character? Okay. Unlike this one, list, pepedeon. So, as we have shown a while ago, R accepted this. Okay. Tinagap niyo yung mga elements na to, uh, itong vector na to, as a list. So, if we create, for example, an object called L1, okay, let's run this chunk. Okay. So, here it presents to us the different elements of your list. You have a Numeric, a character, okay, uh, sorry, uh, integer, etc. And it's already here. If I click L1 here, it's already in our global environment. All right, so you have this one, guys. The object L1 is a list of six elements. The length is six. And then you have these elements, okay. The first one is a double, number one. So this is numeric. Next one is integer. Ito yung 2L natin. Character, logical, complex, and double another numeric. So it accepted this object, L1. Okay. Unlike guys, I said, said a while ago, if you just use the concatenate or the combine function, it will accept that, but it will coerce, coerce it into the lowest uh, ranking, which is your character. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so list can also contain <clears throat> list. So here I'm creating an object called list. 
and it, it consists of days. This is a vector, right? This is a character vector. This is a numeric vector. This is a single uh, character. This is a single uh, logical. And this L1 here is a list. Remember, we created a list called L1. And then you can include it, that also in the list. So if you run this, okay, so you have this. The first element is your days. The second is your vector of one, two, three. Then you have your character, your logical. And then it also lists, it also lists the elements of your L1 of your list, which is this one. Okay. All right, so a list <clears throat> as a data structure can also accept <clears throat> another list okay so let's create this object called my list and it's a list guys consisting of a vector of uh, integers this is another object b which is a character character vector and then c is a function okay, if you run this then this is are the elements of our of our list Okay, so my list contains uh, three objects, A, B, C. Okay, A has a length of five, B has a length of one, and C has a length of one also, which is the function. Okay, any questions so far? None. Okay, uh, take note guys that I'm just going through this because I already posted the video. Any question about this or none? Okay, thank you. Uh, yung kanina yata ang question ni ano to, no? Alright. So, okay, now, this this tells us that you cannot do an arithmetic on list. So, if we ask, what's the type of my list? It's a list structure. The length is, the my list natin, I think, uh, it has three elements. Okay, and if we get, if we subset the first element of my list it's the it's the uh, it's an integer vector one two three four five and then you my list one one can we add one to it let's try this okay we cannot no we cannot add to this first element of my list Un unlike the unlike your vector guys let's create an, an object called vector one integers one to five Okay, and then if we add to that, okay, pwede, no? Nag-add tayo ng one dun sa lahat ng elements dun sa, sa vector natin. So it just added one. So tinanggap niya. Unlike dun sa vector natin. Okay, so here is just a review, guys, of, uh, of what, <clears throat> these are just functions. Uh, just reviewing set that seed, our norm. Uh, so, in order for us to be the same, pakiran itong set that seed at saka yung R1. Let's run this, guys. Set that seed 50. And let's create an object called R1, which is just R norm 10. And we know that the uh, mean of this is 0. <clears throat> and the standard, standard deviation is 1. So, you should be getting this. Pakicheck nga, guys, if you have this. You should have the same if you run the set that seed. Pareho ba guys? Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Okay. All right. So let's let's run another another set of uh, of a numeric vector. Let's call it my values. Okay, set that seed 234, it's a normally distributed random number of 1,000, mean 450, and standard deviation of 10. Then let's generate the, uh, tanggalin natin yung parenthesis dito para hindi na niya i-print yung, ano, yung, yung 1,000 numbers na to. So let's just get the head and the tails of this. My ball ups. I have to run set that seed para pareho tayo. Okay, so ito yung head 
and yung tail. We should be this, we should have the same guys. Did we generate the same values? Guys, paka chat, kung pareho tayo. I generated this. Ito yung head natin, yung first six digits, first six uh, numbers, and then yung tail, the last six. Yes, sir, it's the same. Okay, thank you. So, dapat pare pareho tayo, no? <clears throat> and then, let's just get the mean, median, minimum, maximum, the sum, and up to the standard deviation. Okay, let's run this. Okay, this is the average for 49. Uh, very close to 450, 450, guys, because that's what we wanted R to generate. A hundred thousand, hundred, one thousand random numbers, normally distributed, 449 with 450 as the mean and the standard deviation of 10. So practically uh, the same. So this is the, uh, what's this? This is the, ano ba una? That's the mean median. This is the median. This is the minimum value, 419. This is the maximum value, 480. This is the sum. Okay, so those are the, uh, uh, some statistics that we were able to generate and then class, ano ba yung class ng my values, guys? Alam natin na numeric siya. Okay? Class numeric, but the uh, structure is, it's a vector. Length, that should be 1,000. Okay, and then uh, ito, guys, yung, yung, remember, guys, pag log, ano yung base ng log, guys? Ano yung base ng log? Ipo. Yeah, correct. Thank you, thank you. That's E, no? Pag gusto nyo natin ng log ng base 10, guys, you can use log tapos base is equal to. No? Pwede, or you can just use log 10. Pwede rin to, no? Okay, so you can use log 10 or log and then what? what's the uh, vector and then base is equal to 10. Okay, so we won't do this. Alam naman natin yan. Okay, so tingnan natin tong histogram. This generates a, a plot, a histogram plot. It looks like normally distributed naman kasi ginamit natin R norm, no? It will generate a uh, normally distributed. Uh, of course, mas kitang kita yung normal, normal distribution if the sample size is big. Then you have the plot. The, this should be a scatter plot. Okay, yung numbering lang at saka yung my values. Okay, it's just a scatter plot. We'll, we'll uh, learn this more, yung scatter plot, when we go to regression uh, in the future. And then box plot. So, in box plot, guys, ano to? What's this? It's already time, guys. So, let me just wrap up on this. What's this? This is the minimum value. What's this? That's the maximum, maximum value. Okay. What's this? What's this, guys? First quartile, second quartile, or the median, third quartile, this one, or P75, P25, P50, percentile 25, percentile 50, percentile 75. What's this, guys? What are these two whiskers or fans? Minimum Here, and maximum value. Ah, uh, no. Ang minimum ito, guys. Ito, ha? Ito yung minimum. Yung dot na yan na sa baba. Ito yung maximum. So, ano tong dalawang to, guys? These are the fences or whiskers. And what do they lower, represent? Lower and upper bounds. Lower bounds, upper bounds, lower fence or whisker. Ito yung, uh, yung ginawa ni Tuki. Si Tuki, guys. Ito, statistician siya. Para ma-determine natin yung outliers. So, using Tuki's way to uh, identify that outliers, Ito mga nasa labas niyan, yan yung mga outliers natin. But what's this, guys? What's this? What's this lower fence and upper fence? So you get that, guys, by first you identify the IQR, di ba? Naalan sa stat nyo. IQR is your interquartile range, which is just the difference between quartile 3 and quartile 1. Then once you get the IQR, 
to get the uh, lower fans, you just subtract from Q1, okay, Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. So this one, guys, this one, this length is 1.5 times IQR. Also this one, pareho lang to. Equi, equal yung length nito, no? This is just Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. This is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR to get your fences or your whiskers. Okay, now it's interesting, guys, to, to know, to discover why Tuki used 1.5. Uh, tinanong yung sa kabilang klasa, sabi ko hindi ko alam, no? I have uh, always used 1.5 for it, but maybe we can investigate why 1.5. Why not 1.96? Why not 1? Okay, so that's a very valid question. All right. So that ends, guys, our discussion on on list, guys. Natapos na namin to sa kabilang section, yung sa TTH, yung data frames. So paki-view paki na lang yung videos, guys, kasi importante yung importante yung data frames. The first data structure that we will be most interested in are data frames. Pangalawa na lang yung matrix, okay? Uh, yung the rest, hindi natin siya masyadong gagamitin. Mas gamit talaga natin si data frames. Okay, so may I have your commitment, guys, to watch the video yung pinost ko last week, yung March 11, which is which is a class uh, dun sa Finstad ng TTH class ko. And then, pakiview na rin din yung matrix kasi yung huli natin, guys, ang i-discuss yung structure type number four, matrices. Okay? So, it's uh, it's imperative, guys. So, Wednesday na natin i-discuss to, no? It's important that you understand matrices and matrices can best be appreciated in Excel first. Kaya yung video ka na i-represent, guys, it's in Excel. Paki-view na lang yun, guys. Hindi na natin i-discuss yung Excel nun. The, uh, the file is uploaded. Pakita ko lang. No? Sorry for the extension again. Okay, yung file nasa modules natin, guys. Module 2. Ando dun yung Excel file ito. Yan, guys. Matrix operations using Excel. Okay? So kindly follow the video yung sa Excel para may understanding tayo ng addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, inverse of a function, uh, uh, etc. No? Okay. So thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next, next meeting. Okay. Interquartile range. Okay. So for those of you who came in late, so let me stop already the recording.